And, um, I am the guy, the person that is doing the research here with the dragon fruit. I'm a farm advisor in San Diego County and the main reason we're doing this is as avocado prices and citrus prices and all crop prices in San Diego County declines, growers were looking for alternatives um, that were profitable and that use less water than avocados. And that's one of the reasons we started playing with, uh, with the dragon fruit. It met some of those uh, qualifiers. So we started uh, dragon fruit spin around San Diego and Southern California for several years and I would say that there are some guys in the audience, red fruit growers, master gardeners that know a lot more about this than I do. I made the disclaimer earlier, I'm an ag economist and I'm an animal science major, so I'm playing with plants out of necessity. <laughs> and uh, so with that, I, I've been playing with this and uh, learning from growers, learning from people as, as we go along. I started uh, by trying to get some of these varieties that were, one, reported to produce fruit without hand pollination. The main reason is it is an end blooming cactus and I didn't have the time or the desire to be out at night pollinating flowers. I mean, I, I, I am in San Diego, this is here and uh, you almost have to move to live here if you want to do that. Plus, I think on a commercial scale you have better chances of starting with something that produces fruit without you having to be out there. Given the topography that we have in San Diego, it is hilly, and uh, being out there at night with a hunting light on your forehead is not necessarily the safest thing to do. I mean, but uh, if it is what it takes to to get a good crop on your on your planting, then that is what it takes. That is up to each individual growers to do. So I started searching for varieties, like I said, that were reported to be to produce fruit without hand pollination, whether they are self fruitful, <coughs> self pollinating. That wasn't my concern. I haven't been able to determine that. I've tried, made several attempts at doing uh, by isolating flowers, but I haven't found bags or netting system or, or, or netting that will really isolate the flower to be able to tell whether that flower pollin it, you know, self pollinates. And so, because of that, I, I really can't make that claim about any of this variety. All I know is, and I can tell you is that I haven't pollinated a single flower here and I get a lot of fruit every year. Granted, I've got altogether about 50 different clones. There is an enormous amount of cross-pollination happening because bees move from flower to flower and they do the trick for the most part. That is the most common pollinator we get here, bees. And then there are other insects that, are, you, know, that you see uh, moving around, but bees are by far, I think, uh, what, what, what do the job you know, the ones that do the job. So um, we're checking, we're, we're evaluating for adaptation. We got 19 varieties that went into this trial. It's a replicated trial. Uh, I haven't given names to them. I really had, didn't have any vested interest on any one single variety or any one single plant. I just put them out here and see what survived. What survived, survived, and what didn't, didn't. Um, and uh, and some people kind of resent that. I mean, people that really like plants, well, why, you know, why, why are you letting them die or don't do this or that? And, and uh, really, I've neglected this as best as I can. <laughs> you want to believe that. <laughs> um, and so with that in mind, uh, some plants really made it. Some plants are doing great. Some are doing not as well. And some I'll show you where they were which is kind of the story about agriculture in Southern California, right? You drive around with someone that's been there longer, that's been here longer than you have, and all you hear is, this used to be this, this used to be that, and now it's all houses. I mean, that is the best way to describe agriculture in Southern California, what used to be. And, uh, and so we have 19 varieties. They are replicated five times in this plot. Every two rows has a full set of all the 19 varieties and uh, origins are from all over the board. The, uh, the bulk of them are from Nicaragua. I got seven varieties out of Nicaragua. I got uh, two from a grower in Fallbrook, Bienhoa Farms, and the names will reflect that. They are called Bienhoa Red or Bienhoa White because of the flesh of the fruit. I've got two varieties from a grower in Mexico, Francisco Valdivia, so I got a Valdivia Roja. And I got a variety called Mexicana that I got from here. Uh, Colombiana that I got from him as well. 
Uh, I've got several of them from Pine Island Nursery in Florida. But Pine Island's varieties, they were taken from here. I mean, uh, most of them went from San Diego to Florida. They were named by some guy that really liked heavy, you know, classic rock. And, uh, and then that's why we ended up with names like uh, Voodoo Child, uh, L.A. Woman, Physical Graffiti, Haley's Comet. I don't know what he was smoking from. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but those are the names that have, the, you know, that stick. I mean, the people like those names and, uh, and, and, you know, who knows? That's how you, if you were, you grew up in the 70s listening to rock. I had a guy here that came to City Plans and I said, I'm hooked, man, don't tell me anything. The names are enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used to be a lead singer in a rock band, and, you know, physical graffiti and, well, he was in Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the names, uh, that also leads to a problem with dragon fruit, and it is that because of a lack of name varieties and the fact that uh, it propagates easily and uh, it's popular among red fruit growers and they exchange plant material from one to the next and then you end up with a guy liking one variety that he got from someone else, he gives it a name, names it after his wife, after his daughter. And if he didn't like it much, perhaps after his mother-in-law, whatever. <laughs> but that's how names, uh, you end up with a bunch of different names. So a lot of names here are duplicates, like Colombiana and Yellow Dragon. It's the same, Solanicerius megalanthus. American Beauty and Being Whole Red, it's pretty much the same. Uh, Mexicana, Being Whole White, and Vietnamese Giant pretty much the same variety, Morph morphologically. I couldn't prove it to you because I haven't done the genetic work. And it's something that we've been trying to get money to do, trying to do a genotype for uh, dragon fruit, but we just haven't been able to get a grant to fund of that. And uh, the other thing is, when you buy this kind of material, you trust your nursery, and you get plant material that these three plants, I can tell you with certainty that they are the same because I caught them from the same plant. But when you buy plant material and you place an order, you don't really know that what you're getting is what you're asking for. So I have some plants that uh, every three plants you look at, they are supposed to be the same variety, but you look at the plants and one, or, one is going to be entirely different than the other two. And if and they, are, they should be clones, they should be an exact replica. So, it's, it, so to clarify that, I need to do genetic work on, uh, work on every single plant that I've got here really to, to be able to eliminate any duplicates and, uh, and, and really clean out our gene pool and then decide and start playing with them and, uh, and, and selecting the best ones out of that. So with that said, I'll tell you a little bit about what some of the metrics that we've taken out of these plants and uh, which ones I like, which ones have adapted well, and, and you will see. I mean, if I didn't tell you anything about these plants and I ask you to walk down where you are down the road, you will see what plants are doing well and which ones are kind of iffy and which ones are looking crappy, right? I mean, it's, it's just uh, just the plants. Watering uh, is a cactus, it's a vining cactus, so it survives with very little water. But if you want to produce fruit, you got to apply, apply more water, you know, uh, uh, X amount of water. And perhaps some of you that have grown this commercially may have a better idea of what is the right amount because I don't. I mean, uh, we, we haven't done an irrigation trial. Here we apply more water than they need. And, uh, and we just decided to keep it as that to see how they did in this uh, kind of an environment. These emitters put out $13 an hour and we run this cycle for four hours a week. So that's 56 gallons per plant. It is much more than on a per acre basis, on acre feet basis. I think it computes to about four and a half acre feet, which is an enormous amount of water. Um, right now, we are looking at this, assuming that it won't use more water than avocados. If preferably, it will use less water. So we're starting, uh, we've set up an irrigation <coughs> trial where we're looking at uh, the treatments are full ET for avocados, and then we're scaling it back to 0.75 and 0.5. We figure at 0.25 it will be too drastic uh, decrease and we may not get any fruit. So we'll just look at those three levels and see what's going on. Uh, and and uh, hopefully we'll get a, a good marketable crop. <coughs> the varieties in general survive uh, cold temperatures similarly to ha I mean to has avocados, I would say, a general assumption. If you can grow has, chances are you can grow some of these varieties. 
it got 2007, it dropped down to 21 degrees here for a brief period of time, and most of them survived, except for the Asolinicerius megalanthus that was really annihilated. That really got, uh, most of the plants died, and I had to replant. And some of the Guatemalenses, that includes the uh, Bienhoa Red and American Beauty, and some of the light also got damaged really bad by the cold weather. But uh, most everything, Suffer damage, but you know we pruned them, cleaned them up, and they came back. Um, this variety here is a year, two years younger than the rest of them because they took forever for the cuttings to get going uh, and then to get enough plants rooted to put them on the field. But this is uh, Armando, actually, not Armando. There's a misspelling there. Armando is the name of a guy I got this cuttings uh, right on the border between Honduras and Nicaragua, and. Uh, Oh, they 